Democratic candidate for Massachusetts Attorney General Shannon Liss Reardon is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. She's had groundbreaking success as a labor attorney, and now she would like to be the state's top law enforcement officer. Can she connect with voters from Boston to the Berkshires? The candidate is here this morning. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR. I'm Ed Harding along with the Center Fox political reporter Janet Woods. Great to have you with us this morning. Happy Easter, happy Passover, happy almost marathon day for everyone who does whatever you do. We are pleased to have Shannon Liss Reardon with us this morning. She is a Democrat. She's a candidate for attorney general, a labor attorney who has won cases against corporate giants like Uber, FedEx and Starbucks. She holds degrees from Harvard and Harvard Law. It's great to have you with us again this morning back in the chair. So it's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much for having me. Thank you. Um, so Maura Healy, whose um, job that you would like to have has been a pioneer in going after big business corporate america and she's done it repeatedly and she's won where has she not gone that you would go so mara healy has been a terrific attorney general i am very excited about the possibility of stepping into her shoes and continuing and expanding on the important work she has done um, taking on big corporations is what i've done my whole career i have fought against some of the largest corporations in america and one um, going against the pharmaceutical industry going against companies like exxon for lying to us about climate change i'm excited to expand on that work um, in the areas of wage enforcement, I think there's more that we can do to get money back into working people's pockets. This is what I've been doing for 20 years. I have gotten hundreds of millions of dollars back in working people's pockets, and I have changed corporate policies. I'm excited to bring that energy and passion to the AG's office on behalf of the people. Are there any um, industries that she has not tapped that you think need to be tapped? Uh, I think there is a lot to be done. Again, there's a lot to continue on in enforcing our environmental rules and regulations. There are a lot of corporations out there who are skirting our laws. Uh, getting the laws on the books is just the first step. And I know from my career that laws do not enforce themselves. You need to have a strong attorney general who's a seasoned lawyer who knows how to take on these battles. That's what I've been doing, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing in, in many areas where consumers are being deceived. Our planet is being polluted. Mm -hmm. Workers mm -hmm. are being ripped off. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it is fair to say that you're you're an advocate for combating climate change, right? It, yeah. That is, that is fair to say, right? Yes, yes. So, so let's drill down specifically to one big controversy is the Weymouth compressor. Has Maury Healy done enough on that issue? And what, it, 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 first, let me stop there. Has she done enough on that issue in your opinion? Well, I am shocked that the Weymouth compressor station got to the point that it's gotten to. The community should have been listened to. That is not a site that ever should have been a site for a compressor station. And as attorney general, I will do everything I can to fight that and to shut it down. So you anticipated my next level. What would it, to be a, if you were elected, you would you would fight to the nth degree to get it shut down? I would fight to shut it down. It is spewing noxious fumes and gases to the community. Um, particulate matter is, is getting out there. It's unhealthy. It's unsafe. What would you do that hasn't been done yet as, as AG if you are elected? Well, I think the power of the bully pulpit as attorney general is very important, and I would advocate everywhere I can. Um, it's unfortunate that the federal government has mm -hmm. allowed it to continue, and I think there's a lot of advocacy that can still be done from the state AG's mm -hmm. office to stop this project. Mm -hmm. uh, one of your opponents is Andrea Campbell, and her support would argue not only is there a need for someone with both public and private legal experience, but it's time for a person of color to hold that office. Why do you disagree? So I have spent my career more than 20 years fighting in the courts for civil rights. I've been a civil rights lawyer. I have taken on some huge issues of race discrimination and succeeded. I've, I've gone up the, against the state of Massachusetts for using a discriminatory exam that allows for hiring and promotion of police officers and firefighters. It has a racially disparate impact. My work has gotten black and brown police officers and firefighters hired across Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I, I'm taking on Uber now for using a racially discriminatory system where passengers get to rate their drivers at the end of the ride on a one to five scale. The drivers don't get a really high score of 4.6, 4.7. They get fired. And you know what? That has a racially discriminatory impact on mm -hmm. black and brown drivers. I plan to use as attorney general the power of that office to go after systemic civil rights violations. And that's what I've been doing and winning at my whole but it's career. Not, but it's not important that the person that's actually sitting 
sitting in the chair as a person of color? Is that I what think, you're saying? I think what Massachusetts needs is an experienced, seasoned attorney who has taken on the biggest challenges, who has delivered meaningful results. That's what I've done through my whole career. I think this is a job for a top acclaimed litigator, which I am, not, not a politician. Wait, okay, so you, you, you mentioned you think it's a top judge for a top acclaimed litigator. The current attorney general worked in the attorney general's office for many years in a leadership position before she was elected to the position. You run a smaller firm. So what makes you qualified to, to handle the state's most important law firm with, with 500 workers and no government experience? I am the only candidate in this race who is an actual practicing lawyer. I am the only candidate in this race who has led teams of lawyers to victories, both in my office of a dozen lawyers, um, and I've coordinated with teams of lawyers across the country. I have coordinated with the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office, um, California, New York. I'm the candidate with the most relevant experience for this job. Um, I'm the only candidate who has won jury trials. I have won appeals. I know how to use the law to improve people's lives, and that's what I'm going to do as Attorney General. Okay, we're going to uh, ask you a couple of really quick questions looking for really quick answers. Um, should the state suspend the gas tax? Uh, no, no, that's, that's not the answer. It is, is the death penalty appropriate for the marathon bombers Johar Zarnayev? Uh, no, I oppose the death penalty. Uh, even in light of the fact that the marathon's happening tomorrow and a lot of people have a lot of bad memories coming up. There was, there was horrific suffering that happened that day, but I oppose using the state um, as a, to impose death on our residents. When do you still wear your mask? Um, when I'm out in places that people would be uh, most comfortable with people wearing masks and when I'm on an airplane, when I'm on public transit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Should there be a mask mandate? Well, I know that the cases are ticking up again, um, and I understand that uh, federal health authorities have decided that we need to mask up again for a while, mm -hmm. and I think we should we should follow what the public health mandates. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what your take is on this. The Red Sox are opening their home season at Fenway Park, and, and they're trying to turn Fenway Park into a cashless functioning uh, operation. Um, is that legal? Is it legal to turn something that if I want to use greenbacks but I can't use it at Fenway Park, is that illegal? It, it actually is not legal in Massachusetts not to allow people to pay with cash. And as Attorney General, would you step in if you were in that uh, position? Um, yeah, no, I think it's really important that, that people have access to um, the services that they want to have. I think there are, there are concerns about requiring people to pay um, with credit cards mm -hmm. or debit cards who might not have access to mm -hmm. that. So that is something that I would investigate if... Oh, that's where it is then. It's not, for example, is, is there a legal tender requirement? In other words, you, you're allowed to use legal tender, but that would seem to me to have a vague definition. In other words, could a debit card be, be identified as legal tender? Um, I believe that our state law requires the option to, to pay with cash, and it's, it's an important equity issue because a lot of people, that is how they are able mm -hmm. to, to buy goods mm -hmm. and services.